Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope everyone is having a great week. Happy Wednesday, we made it to another one. And just, I just want to say thank you for those who are in the room right now. We have Patty all the way from Illinois. JC, how's it going today? Always a pleasure. And we have Color Graphics, good to see you. Mr. Brad Mummery, Manitoba, good to see you. So are you guys ready to get Wicked? And I mean Wicked Paints, that is. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. <clears throat> Working with these are a challenge, and I love a challenge. They're a challenge because they're a special paint. Today I have a strawberry smoothie, just strawberries, water, and just put it through the blender. So what I really love about Wicked Paints is that they're predictable, right? You've got to learn what they do when they do it. And the people over at Create, Create Text have been amazing in helping me to understand the paint, you know, its nature, its properties, so it's really fantastic. <clears throat> One of the things I'm excited about learning the Wicked Paints is that you can paint on anything that this is bonded to the surface in such a way that you know you could paint on a guitar you can paint outside you know on a car on a motorcycle this is what's great and you know my live streams now are going to be about wicked paints for the most part and this would be a great resource for you guys to you know, learn about these paints, not be afraid of them, go attack them head on because that's what I'm going to do on the live streams. So let's see, we have Mr. Raul, how's it going? Michael McClung, great to see you. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for hanging. Just going to finish my, my uh, strawberry strawberry smoothie just strawberries and water mr. Dwayne how are you today go Mustangs not banana slugs that was really good so I enjoyed that so as you can see I worked a little bit on Sinead O'Connor and basically I went ahead and did some of the initial layers of paint over my underpainting and remember last week we went ahead and and went over this with the shellac and now you can see just how wonderful the surface it is it's really taking the paint well you know good to see you there Dwayne hang you know Hanging out, hanging in there, doing my best. Just want to thank God for the ability to have this live stream with great people like yourselves. You guys and girls are amazing. I just want to thank you. So, right now you can see I went ahead and did my initial layers. And I did about two hours today. But when I say things that are avant-garde, I'm not going against another another teacher's practices this is just my findings what works for me and I just want to make sure that I say that you know oh yeah the Wicked's amazing Dwayne they are really great so I'm really loving it and uh, enjoying the challenge because on the other side of that challenge is the ability to paint on anything and to me that's worth the price of admission you know the ability to paint on anything that's exciting you know like I said goalie helmets uh, guitars motorcycles uh, cars you name it you know metal panels murals so that's my thinking and that's why I'm going to master this wicked line and I want to take you guys on that journey with me. So I'm excited. So 
now we're going to go over some mixing even though I did have my mixtures earlier I want to see here here are the mixtures I did earlier but I'm gonna put them aside because I'm gonna mix them again now before I started today I went ahead and did a deep cleaning on my airbrushes <clears throat> and one of the things that I that has been working for me and been very successful is doing a deep cleaning uh, not at the end of my painting session but in between my painting session because a lot of times stuff can get into this nozzle here and to me when I give that a deep cleaning it's like I have a fresh start and you know I'm not fighting you know the the paint as it dries through the nozzle so that's one thing I'm doing and it has been very successful you know and so uh like i said i'm not going against anyone's uh anyone's practices this is just me that i'm finding very successful you know what i mean so uh so if you have any questions about that always feel free to ask so so right now what i want to do is i want to start working on one of the darkest parts of sinead's portrait and that is her hair right right along here i'm going to actually work on that and so let's go ahead and and do that together so what i need is the stencil that is going to just have the background covered which is this one right here and let's see i think it goes this way right and this is definitely a time for my glasses now where are those glasses them and they were all the way at the other end of the house so not good and let's see okay so we want to make sure that we have the hair covering exactly on that contour I'm just gonna do the top part of her hair See, I don't want any kind of weird edges, so I'm going to be real careful with this. Okay, I think this is pretty good. <clears throat> Yeah, I can always fix it later, but I don't want to fix it later. I want it to be right the first time. Okay. So, I don't want any kind of uh, underspray. Underspray is our enemy. So, we definitely don't want to do that. And, okay. So, let's see. So, now we're going to mix our dark. And if we look at the picture of her of the beautiful Sinead O'Connor uh, that is really dark but I would say it's not black right I would say maybe some burnt umber and a little bit of black and burnt umber and maybe just a little tiny bit of blue for interest so but they always say that black is just a really dark blue so I take that to heart okay but first I think I want to work on 
this kind of uh, dark, really, really dark color right along the edge. And if I look at that, it's more of an amber color. So let's see if we could address that first. And we'll put her over here. And let's see. Wick, how's it going? Great to see you, my friend. Always a pleasure all the way from Canada. So cool. Mike says he started his first portrait, and it is of his father next to his 58th Catholic, uh, to a 58th Catholic picture. Looks okay so far, going slow. Oh, man, that sounds great. Any questions, send them to me, my friend. Hey, Mike Rushing, how's it going? Great to see you. So this is your first time. Everyone give a warm welcome to Mr. Mike Rushing. Thank you so much from Decatur, Georgia. Go go Bulldogs, right? Georgia Bulldogs, right? Those are those guys. So cool. I'm so glad you're here, sir. Thank you so much. So that's exciting. You know, uh, we, have, we have Mike hanging with us. It's a fun group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a cup and I use these cups. I think I'm going to switch to the smaller cups because I think they're better. So I'm kind of looking for the smaller cups. And so the first thing I'm going to do is look for a burnt umber. And I do have this burnt umber right here by Wicked. It's detailed burnt umber. And it's really cool. I'm going to, and as the uh, Createx gurus say is to shake this up really well give it a really good shake at that little BB running around in there so that's going to be my main color so I'm going to make sure that I put enough of it okay so that's burnt umber detailed burnt umber you can see how, how thick it comes out uh, I'm going to be running at 25 PSI, so I'm going to thin that out. But now I want to uh, do that, and maybe I'm just going to add a tad bit of burnt sienna. Now what's great about the Wicked line is that they have the colors that I'm used to when I work in oil paints. So that's very exciting and a real plus for the Wicked line. Oh, Mike says he's been following for a long time. Never catches me live. Well, I'm so glad to see you, Mike. <laughs> well, I always leave them on record for you guys. So, if you ever miss it, no worries. So I'm going to put a little bit of that. And I want to kill the color, right? One of these colors that are really good for killing the chroma is this color right here, which is uh, Wicked detail raw umber you just put a little bit on there it's gonna it's gonna bring down the uh, uh, bring down the, uh, the the saturation which is really cool JC says be like Mike <laughs> and so now we're gonna put a little bit of this I would say three drops just to kill that chroma a little bit not the chroma the saturation so now what I like to do, there's a great video out on Steve Leahy's YouTube channel about reduction. And he likes to reduce because he works small and as I do. So I'm going to take my 4011, never 4012, 4011, and I'm going to mix maybe one to one. And I like doing one to one because I need that to go through my airbrush. And because I have a 0 0.30 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up off camera well at least away from my artwork I'm going to make sure I really mix that up with the 4011 now that looks pretty much like that that kind of transition tone from the dark of her hair right and we're going to see how that is but I want to it just seems a little strong color wise right so I want to kill that that color a little bit so I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of blue and see what that does this is uh, wicked wicked blue which is cool I'm gonna put two drops orange and blue are complementary colors so 
this is not going to darken it it's just going to calm down the orange of this brown a little bit and that looks pretty good it might have done too much but we'll see right uh, we can always add some burnt sienna back to that so I'm going to reduce it just a little bit more but what I'm going to do with much with uh, uh, Mr. Steve Leahy and Scott McKay uh, so kindly have have uh, talked about on their YouTube channels is just adding a little bit of the 4050 and what that does is since I thin it out so much adding the 4050 is going to help it adhere so we want it to adhere to the surface of the paper now remember I'm not just working on paper I'm working on paper with a shellac finish and that is very similar to let's say you know a board or a metal panel right it's impervious which is really good oh cool so Mike is painting his dad next to a 58 Cadillac very cool Oh, Dwayne says, always add a tad of 4050. So cool. And that's a master of Createx right there. So thank you, my friend. I'm going to add a little bit of this. And it's a nice thinness, you know. It's, it's, not, it's not my inks. And it's probably, probably thinner than I even go with, with Golden. So that's cool. So right here, along here, see if I can lighten up a little bit. Right here along her hairline, uh, it gets brown and then it goes dark, right? So that's what we're working on now. So why am I doing the lighter color first? Because I'm always thinking about underspray and avoiding it. Hey Rick, thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you, my friend. So Rick uh, gave a $10 super chat sticker. He says, your dedication and skill are unprecedented. You're an inspiration. Thank you so much, sir. That really helps the channel. It helps me pay the bills and keep this going. So, you know, something like that, Rick, really lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. Especially pivoting over to to the uh, Wicked line, right? So I thought it was something that really wasn't out there as much as someone doing portraits with Wicked. And I thought that this would be, you know, well, well received, right? So, and I'm gonna stand here and I'm just going to put this in. Make sure I'm getting proper spray. And I am. And coming in. So that brown, although I kind of killed the saturation with the blue, it was still very orange. So it actually, that was a good decision. And you see, I'm going to be bordering that black, that dark color, which I'm going to be coming in with just shortly. Oh, Mike says he's going to take him out of the picture and make it a lowrider Cadillac. Oh, wow, that's cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over, overlap where I'm going to go black or that really dark color. And now I have this really rich color. Sometimes when you have a color, and I do this in oils and basically every medium, if I have a color on the brush, I am going to use that color, right? I'm going to see where I could use that elsewhere. And that's where I am right now. It's like, where can I use this? I'm going to use my freehand shield and make my reference bigger. I'm using something called Pure Ref. Highly recommend it. And take your time until you find that edge you're looking for. Okay. 
and it's going to go perpendicular and not parallel. Go. So you see, here's a good idea with that color to not only do my initial intended area, but also work on other areas that this color works. And always take your time and take it easy, no rush, you know. Okay. I'm going to work on this crease here. see where else can I work since I have this color now. I'm going to raise my PSI a little bit. There we go. So now I'm just looking at the anatomical forms of this beautiful woman. And I'm just gradually going darker, right? But I'm actually going to attack by coming in and doing some intentional blue shifts using the white and a little bit of orange, which is going to be interesting. It always is. It's always like, what am I doing? But there's a method to it. Because right now when you're working just in transparency, it has a certain look, but it doesn't have that painterly look that oil painting look that I'm look that I'm searching for. So that's the difference, you know? Oh, so Mike says he always did like Sinead because she was so brave back then uh, to have a buzz cut. Yeah, and just brave about how she stood up to the music industry and she didn't play the game, you know? Which I felt was uh, her heart was always in the right spot. Again, raising that air pressure just a little bit more. And, you know, when you're painting, you're not going as dark as you want to go. And uh, you just want to just create the sense of of the of the value relationships which I always mention but this is over my airbrush and in India ink underpainting and you can see what a really nice start I have because of that that a lot of my a lot of my uh, decisions are already made which is great I don't have to juggle uh, I don't have to juggle <laughs> Four chainsaws, uh, you know what I mean? I have it already done. I'm just dealing with one issue right now, which is the color. And just working on that edge right there, that beautiful edge. And then right here, you can see here, the knowledge of anatomy is always going to help you. It's never going to help you. Hey there, Mr. Paul, great to see you. How are you, sir? all the way from Australia so great and so right here you can see we have this coming down this is the sternocleidomastoid and the sternocleidomastoid is coming down and that's in front of what's behind here which is her trapezius so it's not only important to know where the the muscles are but what's in front and what's behind right so it's always, you come from a place of knowledge, you're always going to have an advantage, right? And that's what you want. You want that advantage. You want to come from that place of knowledge. 
So if the sternocleidomastoid is in front, then that means the trapezius muscle must be in shadow. And in this case, the cast shadow from the trapezius muscle. So let's do the cast shadow from the sternocleidomastoid. And once again, you want to put your magnets close to the edge and just make sure that I have that edge. Okay. And there's one more. Put it right there. And now what we're going to do is come over here and still the one second rule right you're going to you're gonna look then paint you're gonna paint for one second look for a second you're gonna paint for two seconds look for two seconds and you see how I came in with that sternocleidomastoid coming down here and then trapezius over there. And of course I'm going to soften this up. Because there are some hard edges and there are some soft edges. So we have to address both of them. And she was uh, very muscular when she was young. And you can see it in this portrait, you know, just how muscular Sinead was. I don't know how she was in recent years, but I'm sure that doesn't go away. Okay, so right now we'll come over here. And it's a little darker right here. Tilt it a little bit. See how we're getting that kind of dyna dynamism. I think that's what it's called. So it's not just cast shadow. There's a lot going on in this cast shadow here. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Mr. Paul. A big fan of your work. Amazing stuff, sir. Uh, so, uh, so Mike says, all right, time for him to watch the master on the big screen and put the phone down with the chats. <laughs> Let me hear all the good questions on it. Oh, so cool. Oh, very cool. I'm just very careful of overspray. And that's where the lower PSI really comes comes into play. Now if you ever feel that you're not getting you're not getting that spray, right? You feel ah oh, oh thank you, Paul. I appreciate that, sir. So as you can see here it really you really have to make sure that your airbrush is working correctly so like i said you know my teachings are my teachings and my findings and i never want to go against or say that my way is better than anyone's but i like to clean my airbrush in the middle of my painting session and clean it really well because if i'm doing like a four hour painting session i want to make sure that my airbrush is working on point right I don't want it to I don't want to have my airbrush I don't want to struggle with my airbrush that's the last thing I want you know what I mean and oh thank you sir and so so I don't want to struggle with my airbrush so I want my airbrush working perfectly and if by you know giving it a really good cleaning in the middle of my session is going to make sure that the airbrush is doing exactly what i'm doing and i'm not fighting anything then that's it yeah so paul says airbrushes are so finicky yes 
So I'm trying to cut out the finicky qualities of working an airbrush, right? Because remember, I'm working in all different mediums as well, pastels and oils and... Uh, so I know if I'm fighting, if I'm fighting my, my materials, then I'm in big trouble, right? So you don't want to be in big trouble. It's hard enough to paint as is. So to add, you know, the issue of your, your materials not working the way they should is just like suicide, you know? Yes, the microns are really rough, right? And it can be frustrating. And for me, once I start feeling that finickiness, I'll start doing, you know, like picking the needle and, you know. But once I feel like, you know, I really, I really push it to the limit, I'm taking my airbrush to the sink. I really am. I'm, I'm just not going to deal with, you know, playing around with it, raising the air pressure to fix any kind of weird clogs or anything like that or anything my thing is I'm not dealing with that you know I'm just not playing that you know and so I'm going to uh, take care of business so right now I'm just going to come in you see how we had this brown which was the burnt umber right and I mean it was the burnt umber the raw umber and the burnt sienna and this is was originally just for the hair but notice that it's really becoming like i really found this as to be something that is really uh, really a beneficial color almost almost like a sketching color right and I, that's not what i intended but if it happened it's cool you know we we got ourselves a sketching color so that's what i like the airbrush is that you can sketch with it, right? Which is really important. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> so Paul says it gets a Windex bath. And uh, Paul says, like, driving a car that has a stuttery engine. Yes, you get that coughing, right? That coughing quality. So those of you who are in Australia uh, and also on the Internet, Mr. Uh, Paul McDonald actually has uh, online classes, which are really fantastic if you want to learn his style. Uh, I know his prices are really, really reasonable, so definitely think about that. Uh, Top-notch art there, so definitely. Um, so I always like to promote my friends, and, uh, you know, so definitely. If he is a fit for you, you know, then definitely I recommend him. He's a good guy, he's an honest guy, so definitely and just talented as anything I mean his work is is so fantastic okay so now you see I'm just that might have been a little too dark but that's all right all right so now I have a stencil here I'm gonna take this off. oh let's do what we intended <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and work on the dark halo of her hair, right? So that's going to be good. So I'm going to, this is going to be my dark airbrush. I have another airbrush that I'm going to use for the lighter colors. Now, when I'm working, a lot of times you'll see that I leave the needle off because I need to get to that needle very quickly. So that's why I'll, sometimes I'll leave it on, sometimes I'll leave it off, depending on what I'm doing. So when you're working like a lot and you're doing long days, you tend to need access to that needle in the back and the front. So that usually is uh, the reason why you see a lot of professionals not have that, that, that backing on there, right? So, okay, so I'm going to, let's see, so here is the paint that I'm, that I'm using here. So I'm going to keep this aside because I really love it. And I'm going to put a top on it. Put a lid on it, Tim. Let's see. So we'll just come over here and put that lid on it because I really love that color. You can always mix it again, but it's nice to have it in the chamber. So what we're going to do, we're going to take another cup. And again, we're going to start with 
uh, detail burnt umber. The great thing about Createx is that they are doing something where they're using the, the historic colors. And it, to me, it brings the fine artists in here, you know? And, and it's really fantastic because as an airbrush artist, you could look at Rembrandt, you could look at, let's say, uh, people who are working in oils and say, wow, he's using burnt umber, or look, he's using cerulean blue. Those are things that really help uh, bring the airbrush world and the fine art world together. So I really love what Wicked is doing, you know? Oh, aren't they? The new uh, Createx colors are fantastic, you know? Dwayne says, I don't know where the back of the lid is of any of my airbrush. <laughs> that is so true, right? Because you need to get to that needle, Dwayne, because you're working all day. That makes so much sense. And Paul says that he's using tattoo, he's using a tattooing vortex mixer, and it helps the paint flow. Oh, man, I have to try one. Are they a pricey? Uh, Mr. Paul, I'd love to hear more about that, and so would everyone else here. So, so I'm going to take some of my burnt umber and put that in there. Okay, so burnt umber, and I'm going to come in with some some uh, raw umber just to kill that burnt umber a little bit. Oh, about 70 US. That's doable, definitely. So you feel that really helps the flow. Does it mix it better than doing this, you know, by hand, sir? And Dwayne says he uses the Vortex mixer that he has for several years. Wow, that's so the two people who I admire in the uh, airbrush industry just gave it a rave review. So I think I'm going to have to get one, guys, you know. And I'll do a video on it. And we'll put some, this is uh, Wicked Black. And we'll see what this happens here. I'm going to do a one-to-one -one mixture with my, this is just what I have luck in. I'm not advocating that this is the only way. This is just, from my experience of painting different mediums, using golden and everything, I like the one-to-one. -one. And now I'll get my palette knife. And I'm going to mix this really well. And you really want to mix it for like two minutes, I believe, that our friends at Createx say. So I'm going to mix it really well. So it still needs a slight shake, but definitely helps, Paul says, about the Vortex paint mixer. So that's exciting. So pretty soon I'm going to come in with that orange mixture. It's going to blow your minds. Well, it might, might not. So I still want to go a little bit darker, so I'm going to add a little bit more of my uh, Createx Wicked Black. Here we go. Now I want to go with the Wicked Black because it's a little, uh, little more opaque than the detail. Just a couple of drops there, a couple of drops of my my 4011. Don't use 4012. If you have 4012, keep it as a paint cleaner, guys. Do not use 40 4012. Okay. That's nice and dark. So it's not black. I don't want black because then it'll look cartoony. Uh, so I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I just get that contour correct. I don't want to have to repaint. So you never want to create more work for yourself. So I'm just going to lift this up. It's like the whole thing with uh, people when they say about measuring, like carpentry, is that you measure, what do you say, measure twice? How does that go? I know Mr. Brad knows about that. Uh, something about measuring twice. And let's see. 
four ES is the one he got. Everyone I've known has bought one. Wow, that's great. And Paul says, have you ever seen the new Createx illustration colors? Yes, Pyro Red. I use Pyro Red a lot uh, in oils, and it's great. It's a great color. It's an ancient color, too, right? It's been around a long time. Yes, the yellow ochre, the raw sienna I just love, the ultramarine teal, uh, and, and the ultramarine blue. Yeah, just fantastic. And those are historic colors. Yes, measure twice, cut once. I knew you would have that answer, Mr. Brad. Brad is an amazing woodworker. Holy Toledo, that guy. As well as an amazing airbrush artist. Uh, if you can, give your website there, Mr. Mr. Brad. What is that? I think bradmummery.ca. And Brad is going to have a one artist show in 2024 in uh, Nipawa, Canada. So that's exciting. So he's been getting ready for it. So a year is about what you need for a one person show. That's for sure. So that year will go by quick. Believe me. Okay, so now I have that situated. And, uh, oh, wow, so uh, a carpenter sculptor, that's really cool, that's really neat. So now I had that beautiful brownish color, and I'm going to get rid of most of it, so I'm just going to spray most of that out, and now I'm just going to put this in so I have it mixed with it. And what I could do is I could take my palette knife and mix it really well so it's dark but it's not like oh my god it's not like pure black and that's important let's see how this goes we'll get rid of whatever's in the chamber got rid of what was in the chamber it's flowing beautifully like butter as they say Okay, let's get those magnets close to the border, right? All right, so now I am going to position Sinead. There we go. So what I want to do is I want to work on the perimeter. And notice I'm pumping that trigger, right? Um... I've got to add a little bit of that 4011, do, 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 I mean a 4050. I'm just going to put a tad of that 4050 in here because it's good to do it. It's going to give it that adhesion. It's not just going to like sit on the surface and kind of uh, spread out the pigment. You know that look when the, the pink does that. So the people at Createx are so cool to make the 4011, which is a UVLS clear gloss, which is great. And let's see, right here. Love the way the paint is, uh, paints are spreading beautifully. Like I said, later today, I'm going to probably take a little break and clean my airbrush under in the sink. I won't take the whole thing about, apart, but I will take apart the uh, the nozzle. I'll take that out, and I'll run that through water. Make sure anything that's in there is out. And I'm just saying that's really helping me because I'm used to working with inks. I'm spoiled, right? So if I'm not getting that ink quality, I just don't want to play anymore. So I'm spoiled. And now we're just going to continue pumping that trigger. Maybe I can raise the air pressure at the pack valve here. So I'm a Badger guy, and you can see that Badger is a really great company. Uh, they're second to none. You can see the detail that I'm getting with the Badger. 
Uh, I want is a great company, don't get me wrong, Harder and Steenbeck. Love those the airbrushes. But just to say that, you know, Badger is not a second class airbrush. It can do everything that those big boys can, which is great, you know. So, <laughs> so air, uh, Mr. Mr. Paul says become Sparky. <laughs> And we're just I'm just pumping that trigger because I want to get the beginning of the texture of her hair and this stencil this freehand stencil that I used which I made uh, in this program called silhouette which is fantastico but notice that this color isn't super black right now, why is that an advantage? Because if I go super black, then I'm screwing up all the other values, and I want to build those values. I don't want to have black, and then I have nowhere to go. So this is like a dark, burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw umber, wicked black. So, very cool. And remember, I came in with those browns. I already have this transition tone. And I won't get any kind of overspray, uh, blue shift, because I'm not going light over dark. I'm going dark over light. So it's like a chess game, you know. I think I got a. Here we go. Just pumping that trigger. So why am I using Wicked Paints when Illustration Paints is, uh, you know, a little more geared for? illustrations and portraits is because I want to appeal to those who work with cars. I want to appeal with those who work uh, with murals and stuff like that. Who, and so that's why I chose to go this route. Plus I love the, the paint. Hey Mr. Twain, thank you my friend for this super chat. Always a pleasure. Thank you for your support sir. That means the world to me and um, you know, your continued support and friendship is everything. And, you know, like I said, this month, uh, the Super Chat stickers are actually paying for the gas and electric to keep this house, keep this, this live stream going. So thank you so much, sir. I really, really appreciate that. And a very talented painter as well. So means a lot to me, Mr. Dwayne. And thank you always for hanging out with us on a Wednesday. That's that's a big deal to me. So thank you so much, sir. So so far, thank you to Rick, and thank you to Dwayne. So great. So I'm just gonna slowly build it up, right? Now you can see I'm working on paper. Paper should not work like this, but the fact is, is that I am, I I went over it with shellac so I did my line drawing then I went in with India ink and painted everything in monochromatic values and then I went over it with the shellac and the shellac just just like covers that right so I can't get to the original drawer the original painting and now it's like a perfect underpainting for the wicked paint so Definitely check out parts, part one, and you'll really see just how, how cool it is. I think it's part one and part two. This might be part three, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go too crazy with the hair, because I don't want to have the hair further along or too far ahead of everything else. Her hair is the supporting actor. It's not the star. Her eyes are the star. Ah, so cool, Mr. Dwayne. So very cool, sir. Okay, 
Now I do have a stencil that I can go in and really get the rich kind of burnt orange in the ears. So, you know, it's all a chess game. It's all thinking ahead, right? So I'm an oil painter. So I take my paint mixtures from, from oil painting and I'm a pastel painter. And I take my blends from pastel painting and I'm an airbrush artist. So I take my edges from airbrush. So use everything that's in your toolbox. Don't hold back. And we all have different backgrounds, right? So you want to use those backgrounds to your advantage. Our diverse backgrounds. And I'm still getting really good paint flow. And I wouldn't have gotten that if I didn't go ahead and clean out my airbrush. For me, I wouldn't have gotten that. So that's why it's, it's crucial. Now I'm starting to, to not get the paint flow that I'm looking for, but let's double check here. Okay, this is not bad. I just had a little tip dry. Okay. But once I stop getting that paint flow that I'm looking for, I'm not going any further. come in with some paintbrush techniques uh, down the line right you don't do with an airbrush what comes out better in a in a paintbrush that's what I say and let's see here so I like that and okay so now that's pretty cool so I want to continue but let's take a look and see what we have thus far Right? It's always good to see where we are and assess rather than just, you know, just assume everything's all right. So let's see how our painting of Sinead's hair, really loving it, you know. Uh, yes, can I go darker? Of course I can. But I'm creating edges, right? I'm creating volume. I'm I'm working on the whole and not a bunch of little pieces and that's what's important so so we're just continuing to move around and and get everything so we don't have a surface texture yet it's still ah thank you so uh, mr. mr. Um, Paul said lovely light I appreciate that and so so basically you know, um, I'm just building things up. I'm thinking of the portrait as a whole, as one big organism, and then going from there. And you can see how the stencil moves around. So it's important to, uh, you know, make sure that everything's in its right spot, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something very interesting that is scary. It's always scary when I do this, but I do it because I'm an opaque airbrush artist. I paint in opaques. I love using opaques and transition uh, opaques on the bottom, trans uh, translucent or transparent on top. So although it looks pretty good, just going with the transparents, I'm after something different. This is not better than anything else. This is just my way, right? So let me go ahead, dun dun dun, and we're going to get our, I like the wicked detail white for this because although the opaque white is really nice when you're doing coverage of skin tone, when I'm doing something like this, I need something very similar to zinc white. And even though uh, wicked doesn't say their detail white uh, the Wicked Detail White is made with zinc white. I'm pretty, pretty sure because of its transparent qualities 
that it is zinc white. So let's go ahead and see if we could uh, make this happen, okay? So let's see. So here it is. I'm using this so much that I'm almost done with this bottle. So we're going to put a generous amount in here. So why am I putting a generous amount? Because we have to add just the tiniest bit of this stuff right here, which is Wicked Orange. Now, I like Wicked Orange over Wicked Detail Orange because I believe that Wicked Orange is a bit more trans, a bit more opaque, and you want that opaque to kind of attack that transparent white. So what I like to do is do a nice coverage and two drops of the Wicked the wicked orange does anyone have any questions about wicked I'm really excited to answer and of course 4011 never 4012 only to clean your airbrushes I'm still gonna do a one-to-one -one. and I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go ahead and we're going to see how this works. Now remember, the paper that we're using is Gunmetal by Dayla Rowney. It's called Canford Cardstock, and the color is Gunmetal. So we have a really nice dark gray color underneath, which is does wonders of keeping that color from getting too, too overpowering. We don't want a cartoon. We want it to look like nature nature is gray uh, nature is not vibrant on a sunny day a rose may be vibrant but not a face in normal lighting so we're going to put this in here and I've done this several times and so far <laughs> not too many disasters but I just cleaned this airbrush out super thoroughly right so now we're going to, uh, we're going to be about six inches away. Oh, let's, let's put that background stencil back on there. I'm really happy with the hair, by the way, and that contour of her beautiful ear. Okay. You know, okay, so I'm going over the background, right, you might say, but let's keep it clean, right? Cleanliness is close to godliness. Let's keep it clean. Um, so always you want to keep your colors clean, your edges clean, and this way what's there is what you want it to be there. There, Detail white is the go-to white. So, oh, wow. So, yeah, it's a really nice white because... It has that kind of semi-transparent quality that I love. And like in oils, a similar color would be the zinc white. And that's why I think we're dealing with zinc white, you know? Let's see what we got here. I just want to make sure I get this edges pretty good. It's not going to be perfect, of course. That's... That's why they have erasers on the end of pencils. So I'm okay with not being perfect, but I am gonna do my best to keep it clean, right? Yeah, that detail white is really, has a really nice feel to it, doesn't it? I think the whole uh, Wicked line has a really nice feel to it. Once once you try, stop trying to make it do what, what it isn't and really enjoy what it is, I think that is okay so right here you notice when we came in with that kind of burnt sienna it kind of was too rich because it's a transparent over an opaque so we kind of want to calm that down so I like going over it with the with this orange white mixture because I can lighten it without getting a blue shift and that's what I'm gonna do now see how that calms down and the same thing here. So now I'm able to lighten these values without getting a blue shift. And and by doing that, I get a much more opaque look. And I'm gonna probably do this several times in the painting. 
Oh, Patty, thank you. Patty says she's looking great. I appreciate that, Patty. So right here again, you can see how it's just, you know, when you have a transparent just sitting there on top of an opaque in the early stages, you have to calm that down. And I'm calming this down. So how many artists out there use this kind of going in, going in on purpose with the orange? And I have to make sure I'm not getting any weird noises here in the airbrush. So here I'm going to kind of work on this area right there and try and get that look of try and get this this look of an oil painting and I'm just pumping this trigger oh uh, Patty says she needs to sign off have a great uh, weekend Patty don't work too hard over there and it's always amazing to see you thank you so much for hanging out Patty So right now I'm working on this uh, corrugated supernator uh, muscle here. So I'm able to do that with this orange and white mixture. If I just went in with white, we all know what's going to happen. It's going to be blue. But since I'm attacking this with the orange, I'm fighting it. And uh, let's see. Oh, so uh, Mr. Paul says, that's why I like erasing back to the paper. Yes, exactly. That's another way. Erasing back to the paper is very similar to doing this. And uh, Paul also says he loves the white for clouds and smoke for the blue shift itself. Oh, yeah, that's so true. When you actually get the blue shift on purpose, right, Paul? And that's what I'm doing right now is getting the blue shift on purpose going to come back in again with some transparency and kind of continue that whole process right just continue that process over and over again uh, and Dwayne is uh, laughing uh, saying that he has a lot to do a lot of work on black surfaces oh how cool is that so you guys know I haven't worked on many black surfaces in the airbrush so love to hear more about that and opaques make a much smoother painting though they really do uh, it creates a uh, a different look and the look that I'm used to I have to say so right now I'm going to paint the highlight caused by the um, malar fat compartment right over here so I'm just going to indicate it perpendicular and not parallel see how I'm just indicating that hey mr. Smith how are you Brad great to see you how's everything sir now right here is called the uh, zygoma and the zygoma is where the zygomatic bone actually attaches to the uh, frontal bone uh, actually yeah no it actually attaches to the temporal there's like a little ridge there so it attaches to the temporal here and then over here it attaches to the frontal bone but this little bridge here that's what we're painting now and we could only do that by coming over with this white mixture see how I can actually uh, get that which is pretty cool and right over here we have more of a light area right over here so I'm just gonna put that in so what I'll do is I'll come in with you know really lighten it up and then go over it again with opaques and then lighten it up and go over with opaques and so so the drama continues and so sort of, it's like working in pastel right very similar to that Now I have to be careful of building it up too much because then it's going to look orange and I don't want it to look orange. So the initial initial layers, it's going to come as white, but if you continue, 
it will become orange, which is no good. Right here is a tricky area. I'm going to try it, and we're going to see what happens. because I'm coming in that bottom area with that pinkish color. So I have to set up, you know, like a chess game. I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting good spray because white is a son of a gun. Let's see. I don't want any spitting or coughing. So it looks like it's pretty good right now. I'm gonna raise that air pressure just a tad and let's make this happen. So now you can see I'm able to set up that pink, right? That's coming later. But I'm not really crazy about how this is spraying right now. One second rule, guys, always in effect. But it's really important that I light that lip up to come in later with that orange. So I'm gonna stick with it. And then right here, we have what is called the uh, mental fat, which is a fat compartment that's like a golf ball size on our chin. And that is, uh, sits on the mentalis, which is the center part of your jaw. But there's this dark caused by this rubber band muscle called the obicularis oris. Nope, it's, yeah, the obicularis oris. Obicularis meaning round, oris meaning mouth. So it goes around the mouth like this. But it pushes in that, uh, that men mental fat compartment and that comes out so what we want to do is kind of indicate that and let's see if we can make that happen let's make it happen guys okay now that's spraying nicely that was nice it's playing nice right now okay all right so you can see how when you start understanding the paint and letting the paint uh, work with the paint, not against it, you can do some really cool things. So that's what we're looking at. So, so when you go back to teaching, Mr. Brad, I know that you have summer vacation now, summer recess, I should say. woman I'm so sorry what happened you know it's just a tragedy oh look at that you go Monday and the kids come back the following Monday now you're in the south right Brad uh, is that why because you have all around all year round school or something like that see I'm being brave I'm going into the white of the eyes but it's that orange mixture that allows me to do this, everybody. So, you know, I was painting in airbrush only from around 2010 all the way to airbrush and color only from 2010 all the way till around 2018. And then at that point, I said, you know what, I'm going to do something to teach people the importance of edges and, and contours and stuff like that. And I stuck with that so it wasn't that i didn't do color it's just oh mr mr paul has to go thanks for hanging out my friend so always check out paul mcdonald's work on youtube and on his website put your website down there mr mr paul so people can go check out your work so great stuff my friend Let's 
see. See how I'm kind of pushing out the, the mental fat compartment and then pushing in where the ubiquitinosaurus is, which is great. Oh, Brad's in Arkansas, and no, we get out in late May and go back. Yeah, that's the way my nephews did when we lived in Florida. It was very similar. I'm going to lighten the Obicularis Oris because I want to come in there with a lighter brown. So does anyone do this technique where you actually uh, go over with white on purpose? And if you do or you work differently, I'd love to hear. Mr. Air Todd, how are you? San Diego guy, good to see you. So let's do that here as well. This is not getting exempt from this, right? We're gonna attack this area too. See how it changes the quality of it, you know? By attacking the blue shift, right? We're not afraid of the blue shift, we're going right at it, you know? We're going to the loony bin together. That's exactly what's happening here. And I'm even going to do the dark of her hair because we're gonna go over that again. So what is this doing when we're going ahead and doing this? We're creating more of a unity and we're creating a surface texture, which is very, very important. So I'm actually going to do this part here so what it means is that we can go over it again with a transparent and then go back over it and keep doing it until we get exactly what we're looking for what am I looking for I don't know no we're looking for something but see how I'm kind of pushing everything back creating a unity which is very important Okay, so right over here. Let me put this here and put this here. Let's establish some of the white of her t-shirt. We'll just establish it, right? You know, my one of my painting teachers at the National Academy of Design said, once you paint the paint, once the painting has 100% coverage of paint, it's almost over. What do you guys think of that statement? Have you experienced that in your own work? If you're watching this on record, just leave a note in the description. I'd love to hear a comment, so to speak. See, establishing that white there, you know, bringing that together. And, all right, so, let me see. I'm just going to make sure that I have nice, I didn't forget an area. I tend to forget areas. So, again, what do you think of this, this part of my painting doing this? Now that orange mixture, I'm going to be needing that because when I make mistakes, I'm not doing any erasing. I'm not doing any scratching. I work differently. So if I make a mistake, I'm going to use that orange-white mixture to get back to the white and then add it. So, so in my technique, there is no, uh, no erasing. All right, let's take a look and see how good or how bad it looks. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. So, getting there, right? Getting there. That's exactly it. Now, there are some really cool techniques which I like to add is maybe coming in with my Airbrush India inks to darken it. So, whatever you have more control, you can do that and they will work together. So, those are different things that you could possibly do to take it to that next level. So, what I'm going to do right now is I think... Um, I'm thinking about putting in the background yet, but I don't know. But it kind of will help me because if I have the same kind of blue-green 
that's in my reference, you'll help me see the colors right next to one another. You know, that whole thing of uh, simultaneous contrast works in value in color as well. So, but what I want to do is I want to I want to save my board. I don't want to have a blue board. So, we're just going to be patient. And so, right around now, it's like, what, 1040. So, I have my dark color right here. And... Is that the dark color or is, yeah look at that that's interesting let's see now this one okay cool so this is my dark color and the extreme Patriot arrow is the light color so what I'm going to do is we're gonna work on the background let's make that happen but to do that I have to make sure that I get some paper on all sides. And normally I would say use a respirator or a mask because it's always best. You don't want to be breathing this stuff in. here like this make sure we cover any holes in the paper and on this side it doesn't have to be perfect at all because it's just covering but we'll make sure our magnet covers that hole right there the hole punch Okay, do I have any more? I think I have others in the room. I'll be right back, my guy, my friends. Hold on. scrap papers to save my desk save the desk okay put this over here my wicked colors so hopefully we can set something up where we can maybe have wicked uh, paint giveaways on this channel what do you guys think of that would that be something you'd like to see any little, little holes here and there and right there is one little spot there we go so now we are protected and so we have to mix that blue right so what I'm going to do is I don't want that white sitting in there. So I'm just going to be right back. I'm going to clean out this airbrush really well. And But before I do that, I'm going to cover my white mixture. biggest takeaways I think is just to be very deliberate and take your time with the process 
because on the, any little bit of uh, deliberation or being careful is going to go a long way, right? It really is. So I have my orange-white mixture, which is going to come back and I'm going to need it. Just going to dump that out in here. And then I'm going to cover it. I don't think I'm going to be using that tonight, but maybe on a different painting. I'm working on other, other paintings as well. But, you know, in retrospect, it's always good to mix it over and over again so you get that mixing experience. Just like cooking, you know, the, you get a cadence. It's not so much a recipe, a cadence on how, how it should look to certain colors. And you see, it's quite a mess. And so this is what I mean. I would not go ahead and start attacking a painting using that. Because that means whatever is over here is also in my nozzle. And so I'm going to actually take this apart, take 10 minutes, clean out that nozzle, and clean out this whole area right here, clean out the cup. So now I'm going to have a really beautiful spray pattern so important to me and you know and I don't want to compromise that in any way so like I said this is not something that I say is the only way or other people are wrong this is just what works for me because I'm used to working in the airbrush India ink and I need that flow you know I need it to work in that way uh, so that's why if you are having trouble and you find that your airbrush is spitting and coughing, then then definitely you might want to take a page out of my playbook and say, you know what, the best the best defense is not to be there in the first place. So why have any of that before that happens? Go ahead and clean that up. And you know what, if it's successful, I don't care if anyone doesn't like it because for me. I, like I said, I don't have time to be dealing with an airbrush that's not working correctly. So that really did work. Remember we had the gray of the paper in the lower lip, but that lower lip was, is going to come in and have this beautiful uh, rose, uh, light rose color. So I had to set up that up by coming in with that white and orange mixture to really turn that gray into this uh, light color so I could come in with that transparent okay so this is where I am right now with this and I am just going to go ahead and give it a quick cleaning I'll only be like maybe three minutes okay so talks amongst yourselves I will be right back Just very quickly to show you all, uh, I'm going to blow this up and show you what's sitting in the nozzle here. See that sitting in the nozzle? If I just went ahead and blew that out, I know some of that would still be there. And as more air is going through there, it's getting drier. And as it's getting drier, what's going to happen that's going to flake off 
and cause coughing and spitting and that's just something I don't want so best defense is not to be there and I'm almost done uh, getting this paint this airbrush ready for the next step be right back guys Okay, we are back in business. Let's see. Just gonna make sure I clean off this cap. And thanks for waiting. This cap is really dirty. Let me clean that off. And now it's time to mix that background, which is a nice kind of uh, aqua dirty aqua color okay so I want to clean off this cap I don't want any of that white paint to end up in my nozzle so like I said best offense the best defense is not to be there okay now let's see make sure I'm getting a good spray
If you ever hear any water that got in there when you cleaned it, just take another airbrush and spray air into that. And that will take care of that. Alright, so that's good. Now, I'll put this over to the side. I know that airbrush is going to work perfectly. Let's keep our fingers. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Great to see you. So we have Ryan in the house. That is great. Giveaways are always nice, Brad says. Yes, that will be great. So I'm hoping that we could work something out with Create Text. Wouldn't that be great? So uh, I think uh, we have a lot of fans of Create Text here. Uh, how many people use Create Text and here? How many people uh, just say yes to uh, just say Create Text in the in the comments there? If Createx is your favorite paint brand for airbrush, love to hear. So that's always good. Ryan says, haven't got to watch you live yet, but I've watched you a few of your past. Hey, welcome, Ryan. First time here. So, Ryan, nice to see you. Everybody give Ryan a very, very warm welcome. Great to see you. Oh, look at that. Ryan loves the illustration line. We got a Createx. Uh, we have a nod from Dwayne, which is great. So, so far, two people are Createx fans. So, I like to hear uh, who else uses Createx. What is Createx your go-to paint? And if so, what line is your go-to? Love to hear that, guys. So, now, we are in the 11 o'clock hour. So, we are getting to the point where... Uh, we're gonna pretty much do the background and go from there but we have to cover her up right so you're probably saying Tim why are you doing all this why don't you just paint well like I said I think airbrush or any painting is probably 99% preparation and 1% execution I think that ratio is a little exaggerated but definitely preparation is really important and I know Brad will definitely, not um, Brad, yes, but also Dwayne will definitely agree because he does uh, custom work. And also Brad will agree, yes, both Brads. So right now we're going to cover Sinead here. She was so beautiful. Oh. So beautiful. You know, Sinead O'Connor and I are born one day apart. I thought that was a cool bit of trivia. And our families both come from Ireland. But she was... My family's more from Monaghan and Limerick, and her family is from the Dublin area. More magnets, huh? Oh boy, we need more magnets. These are really weak magnets there, okay. We just got to make sure we don't have any on this spray. There's going to be some correcting to do. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm going to use post-it notes because right here in her upper lip, I had that open to paint. So, so people are going to wonder what that means. Uh, I'm just going to leave it there just to confuse everybody. going to think it's like a conspiracy. What does he mean by yellow... Yellow 24 and green 8. Okay. I have a whole bunch of these old school magnets here. Very cool. Brad is welcoming Ryan to the feed. That's always great. We have a great group here, Ryan. Uh, friendliest bunch of people you're ever going to know. Talented as all heck. All 
right up to the edge. See how all this preparation? But it pays off. What else am I going to do? What else am I going? See, this is no good. See how it would have went into the background? That would have been tragic. Oh, cool. Canada. Very cool. So we have Rick from Canada. We have Ryan from Canada. And we have Mr. Brand, Brad from Canada. The Canadian Connection. Very cool. Let's get that off of Sinead's eye there. Look how cute she looks. Okay, so now Wicked has some really great colors, especially for something like this. So let's see. We're going to see about a base color like a blue-green. So this is what we have thus far. Let's take a look. So I love the Wicked line. Um, here we have, look at that, detail blue-green. That's about, about as uh, on the money as possible. Let's see if I could. There we go. Detail blue-green. And then we have detail viridian. Viridian is not the color we want, but why I like viridian is that it's a, uh, it's a historic color. And viridian is a full transparent. And when you are, let's say, working on transparent and you want to do a transparent brown or a transparent rose color, but it's too strong and you want to calm that down, then Viridian is perfect. And I know Createx makes that in their uh, illustration line just for that purpose. So your painters are going to use Viridian for that. So I have this detail blue green and that looks really good, right? So I'm going to mix that. I haven't opened it yet. Very cool. Dwayne is welcoming Ryan as well. So I got to get that Vortex thing, a paint mixer that you guys have been talking about. And so I'm going to contact them. <coughs> see if uh, see if they could maybe help us to give one away or something like that. That would be wild. Okay, so I have this. And so we're going for that background. So I'm going to mix a good amount. This is going to be our main color. So I want to kind of coat the bottom there like that. And I want to start off on the right foot. So I'm going to do a one-to-one. -one. So I'm going to come in with my 4011, never 4012. one to one. I'm going to mix that and let that cook, so to speak. And I'm going to mix it away from my painting. Now, this is a really strong color and I want to calm it down. So we can gray it down with, let's say, a raw umber or something like that. But we can also gray it down with its complement, right? So that's an important consideration. Whoop, I thought I was cleaning up and I was messing up. Okay, right there. Ounce of prevention goes a long way, they say, or something like that. Okay, so... This guy is great. I know you all have one, but it's really, really cool. On the back, you can see you have all these different colors. So the color that we have is this here so where can we find something similar to that well i guess the one similar to that would be right here so if we move over to our complementary and we see that it's a red orange so that's kind of like a ballpark to calm that down so that's what we're going to do color theory 101 and let's see i do like they have a burnt orange have you guys seen the Wicked Detail Burnt Orange? It's really nice. Very powerful color. Really like it. I'm going to put one drop in there. Let's do two drops. We'll live on the edge. One, two. 
dream because we're crazy like that. All right, now I'm gonna get my palette knife and I'm gonna mix this. And what we're looking for is that burnt orange being its opposite color is gonna be a little interference of that color causing it to move to the gray area. And it's still a little strong, so I'm going to add a little more of that burnt orange, but I'm also going to go ahead and add some of that raw umber. Because raw umber is a really good desaturating color. One, two, whoop, oh, I put a lot in there. I might have went hog wild, let's see. No, I think I realize I needed to calm that down quite dramatically. It's a very vibrant color. It really is. So now, my goal is, is if I add white to it, I think I'm going to have a whole lot of white to add to it. So I'm going to put that in a separate cup. It's only like 10 cents a cup, so I'm okay with that. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in a cup. And now, I do want it opaque a little bit. So I'm going to go with the titanium white or the wicked opaque white. Save that, trans, that detail of white for my orange mixture. So let's put this in here and see what this does or doesn't do. And just a tad more of our 4011. Okay, so we we have to add a lot more white to this. But we're getting there. I wouldn't say a lot more white. Maybe, actually, at this point, maybe we can start with a little burnt umber. No, raw umber. Burnt umber is a brown. Raw umber is more of a black. And it does tend to shift from different uh, paint companies, but I do like this because it's a greenish black. And it's really nice. Oh, Brad is a Createx fan, so he's using that as well. Good to see. Now, I don't know how strong uh, the raw umber is going to be. So we may have to add more of that burnt umber. Definitely more burnt umber. Sorry, raw umber. Keep saying burnt umber. Burnt umber on the brain. Okay. A little more 4011. Very similar to Golden, you know, when using their airbrush medium. Now it's starting to get close to what I want. And, but it's much dirtier than this. So I'm going to add a little more, even more of the raw umber. But I'm going towards somewhere. I'm not trying to match it. I'm just going towards it. I'm kind of intellectualizing this color. I'm not trying to mix exactly. I'll get that. I'll adjust it from one layer to the next. But as an oil painter. Okay, that's pretty good. I really like it. So I'm going to add a little more 4011. And I'm going to add some 4050. Because I want that to stick, right? But I want it to flow really nicely through my airbrush. Brad says he's been using Createx quite a bit lately. That's fantastic. Are you using the illustration line or the wicked line, Brad? I'm gonna, that's a good amount there. And that stuff is really fantastic. So that 4050 is this UVLS clear. And it's really great. 
it's great as a uh, top coat, you know, to clear your artwork, but it also works to use as a uh, clear painting medium so you have better adhesion. So if you're working on, let's say, a car or uh, something hard surface, it definitely would be in your best interest to use it. Now in retrospect, for the background, I should have cleaned out my large cup color, but here I am. And as they say, hindsight is always 2020. Now I'm going to mix more of this, but right now, okay, so here's, now we're going to do something cool. We're going to use Mr. Scott McKay's amazing method of, of straining the paint. So I am going to put this right here. So if I do that, it's going to be messy. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use yet another cup. I'm just wasting, I'm killing the environment personally. All right, so going to take this because I did notice there was some little floaty things in here. And I do see those floaty things. So the whole thing with, with painting uh, is just trying to fight anything that's going to get in your way. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, the whole thing of that whole Sun Tzu, the best defense is not to be there. So let me clean this out. I'll be right back. Clean that out, and now let's put that in our airbrush. And we're going to need more, but before the end of the night, I'm just going to establish the background. Put that right over here. Making sure I'm getting a good spray. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, that's nice. That's exactly what I wanted. Doesn't happen often in life. Maybe an airbrush, but uh, Ryan says I missed. <laughs> what did I miss, sir? Hey, Wendy, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh, oh, Wendy missed him. Oh, <laughs> yes, Wendy, you missed me. How you doing, Wendy? Good to see you. So glad you're here. So this is working really great with the gray of the paper, right? So that's a plus. But I think for the first layer, I'm going to be okay. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to call it a night. And then we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do next week. And just keep attacking. Uh... Oh, well, thank you, Wendy. Wendy says I'm doing a great job. Well, that means a lot to me. I love the painting of the crows that Wendy did. I believe it was a watercolor, just out of this world. Wendy's from Texas. As they say in Mexico, in, in Latin America, Tejas. So I did end up having enough, but notice how cool it is. Oh, wow, Mr. Todd with the super chat. Thank you, my friend. Great to see you. Always a pleasure. And thank you so much for that super chat. It really helps the, it really helps the channel. Uh, really, really does because, you know, this is my only form of income, which is art and teaching and YouTube. So doing that really helps keep things going so i just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart sir and thank you for your continued friendship and hanging out with me on wednesdays i know there's a lot of other places 
and other things to do, so I don't take that lightly when you all decide to just spend your precious time hanging out with me. And I try and give the best I can, give the most information, not hold back. Last week was cool. I talked about this shellac, which is, has been a real breakthrough for me and my students. So that's why I share it with you all. Has anyone out there tried the shellac? And if you have, what are your findings? Now, shellac allows you to work on paper. And, you know, in oils and airbrush, it's really great. Now, I'm going to go ahead and have this cut again rather than use this particular uh, this shield here that I made. I'm just going to cut it again. Oh, great. So Wendy uses it and she loves it. That's exciting. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, doing oil paintings on it, it's much better than canvas. It really is. Plus, it opens up all the different colored paper and textures and weight. I'm having a lot of fun as well. Plus, you can see I'm having a heck of a time with airbrush, right? So this is not going to be the background that is perfect, although I thought it was perfect. I'm going to do several layers in my background until I get it right. But I'm not trying to match it. I'm not a color matcher. I'm a painter. And painters do things a little bit different. So it's 11.23, and I'm just going to lift this up. And we're going to see how good or bad it looks. And then we'll, we'll call it a night. Maybe if there's any questions, I can answer them about shellac or, you know. Let's see. So it's going to be interesting getting all these magnets off in a timely fashion. And Bradley says, oh, so shellac. So Brad, last week, go ahead and check out last week's live stream at the end. I think the last 20 minutes, and I go over the shellac, and it's really cool. And the, the shellac that you need to get, there's a link in the description, guys, for the shellac. And that, that link is an affiliate link. It's for Amazon. You don't get charged anymore. It's the same low price, but I get a little tiny baby commission, which always helps out. So definitely check out the shellac you want to get is the clear version. You don't want to get the amber version. And uh, yeah, so Wendy says uh, uh, shellac paper, then you can paint over anything. And what I do is I do, I do a pencil drawing on the paper. Then I'll do an airbrush India ink painting. And then on top of that, I'll shellac it. And then I have a beautiful underpainting to go ahead and work in Createx, uh, Wicked Paint, Oil Paint, uh, Golden. It's really amazing. But I'm really having a great time with, with Wicked. And you know what, Golden, I think you're, you got, you definitely have your, you met your match. Because the Wicked line is really amazing and if anyone wants to move on over to uh, the wicked line please feel free to ask any questions I can direct you to some of the best uh, wicked painters out there let's see what we got what we have so yeah you can see even though I went ahead and calmed that down that still was a very strong color. Imagine if I didn't calm it down. So we'll come over here, put that there, and we'll lift this off. Okay, so um, we're there, right? I mean, we're, we're on our way. We have our base color, and you can see how that base color really brings out the color relationships of Sinead, right? What looked kind of dull before is starting to look nice and vibrant. So having the background in there keeps us from from uh, oversaturating because of the color, you know? Uh, Wh Wicked is the best. Uh, so yeah, Wicked is really fantastic. It's like, 
it's really wonderful. You, there is a learning curve, but once you get that learning curve down, it really is exciting. And I love a challenge. I love, I love a paint that is going to give me as much as I put into it, right? It's, uh, it's gonna make you work for it, but once you do the work, it's really fantastic. So really happy with it. Oh, listen to this from Dwayne. For, for a custom painter, it's a must unless you want to go HOK and wear a respirator. So, Dwayne, one of these days, could I bend your ear and talk about how someone like me could go into custom painting? You know, once I really get proficient in Wicked, uh, I'd love to learn more. Uh, so, definitely. I would bring my portrait... Uh, skills into that you know so i i like the idea of doing like uh like guitars and goalie helmets those are the those are the areas i would really love to go uh so yeah so so the great thing is wicked is water-based and uh and i know uh when you add the 4050 it has like a uh uh, a resin with it. It's a urethane uh, resin that kind of makes it a hybrid, which is really cool. Ah, definitely, Dwayne. Uh, that means a lot to me. So I definitely will bend your ear, my friend. I feel comfortable that you will give me the greatest guidance ever. So uh, yeah, I would love to do something in that realm just to start going in there because that's the one of the things like so why use Wicked, right? So my thing about Wicked is I could have went with illustration and I do have experience with illustration, but I wanted to go with Wicked because of what it can do for us, right? Uh, I can go ahead and, and paint on a motorcycle. I can paint on a guitar or a goalie helmet and not miss a beat, right? So, uh, so that's something. But going over this of what I did today, I went ahead and, uh, you know, basically before I got here today, I went ahead and did some transparents over her face. And once I finished with the transparents, I came in with the white and orange mixture. De uh, it was uh, Wicked Orange and Detail White and kind of smoked everything out. And now when I come back, I'm going to come in with more transparents and kind of repeat that process until I get a real nice skin texture that has nice gradations and softness that I think you can get in this technique that I use. Also, we worked on the background and we made sure we protect my table and everything. So Wicked has such a great variety uh, with the detail uh, line, the Wicked detail line. So what I did for the background basically was the detail blue green by Wicked and then I kind of killed the color with the detail raw umber and we wanted to really get the complement so it wasn't too bright so we came in with the detail burnt orange which is right here these colors are a little bit close but the burnt orange is what you would use as a complement to this blue green so that's the reason why you would want that uh, so Brad says she's looking great so far Tim thanks for a great feed thank you sir and uh, so Brad says he's never used Wicked on any cars or motorcycles that is cool so maybe we'll see that this year and Dwayne says almost all of his work is on objects not canvas or paper cool that's very cool and so the, the Wicked really allows you to do that, right? Which is great. And Todd, have a great night. Thanks for the super chat. Thank you, Dwayne, for the super chat. I really appreciate that, sir. And thank you so much for uh, Mr. Rick over in uh, Canada for the super chat. You guys are just amazing. Thank you always for your support. Wendy, thank you. She says she's looking beautiful. Everyone have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for the newcomers. I really appreciate it, you. Ryan, uh, it's great to see you. I hope to see you next time. Paul, Paul McDonald, hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. And we also had, uh, let's see, uh, 
JC was here. It was great to see uh, JC. Mike rushing for the first time. Mike rushing for the first time. Hope to see you again. Uh, Dwayne and Brad and uh, Michael McClung. Uh, Patty, of course. Raul, always a pleasure. Thank you guys, Patty. If I missed anyone, it's not because you weren't important. It's because it's getting late and I'm kind of, woo, kind of... Uh, but next week's going to be fun, so we're going to attack this. I may do some off camera, but whatever I do off camera, I'm going to have as a video on my, on my YouTube channel, and I'll alert you guys. Take care, everybody. Always a pleasure. I'm so excited to hang out with you every Wednesday.